things are going to get far worse than what they're telling us. Over the past few months, we've been reporting a series of facts and stats that show that global food production is set to collapse to perilously low levels this year. In other words, the food that isn't being grown in 2022 won't be available at the stores in 2023. Unfortunately, most people out there don't seem to realize the real extent of the food shortages that we're about to experience. And it's not only in the United States. We're on the verge of an absolutely unprecedented worldwide food crisis that could start as soon as next year. But still, the vast majority of the population doesn't seem very alarmed about this. Perhaps they just don't understand what's truly going on. So, we would like to encourage you to get this warning out by sharing this list with as many people as you possibly can. As you're about to discover, we now have a large amount of data indicating that it is impossible to deny what is coming. But before moving on, we would really appreciate your support by leaving a thumbs up in this video and subscribing to our channel not to miss our next list. Without further ado, the following is a list of 35 things we know about the coming food shortages. Number 1. This year's hard red winter wheat crop in the United States was the smallest since 1963. But there's also another major distortion. Back in 1963, there were only 182 million people living in this nation. Now. Our population has exploded to 329 million. 2. In Texas, extreme weather and higher input costs forced cotton farmers to walk away from nearly 70% of their crops because the harvest is so paltry, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The poor yields are probably more than a one-year blip as climate change alters weather patterns in agriculturally important parts of the country, contributing to higher food prices that experts don't see ebbing anytime soon, the report highlights. 3. In California, farmers are projecting that this year's rice harvest will be half what it would be in a normal year. 4. The nation's tomato crops were severely impacted by the rise in temperatures, and the 2022 harvest is expected to come in at just 10.5 million tons, over a million tons lower than a normal year. 5. In fact, what's happening to corn crops is even worse. According to analysts at Rubberbank, American corn is on track to produce its lowest yield since the drought of 2012, meaning that this year, we will have the worst corn harvest in a decade. 6. The Rabobank analysis also found year-to-date shipments of carrots in the United States are down 45%. 7. At the same time, sweet corn shipments dropped by 20% in the U.S. compared to a year-ago levels. 8. Year-to-date shipments of sweet potatoes in America have shrunk by 13%. 9. The country's shipments of celery have fallen 11% over the past 12 months. 10. A separate analysis by the U.S. Department of Agriculture revealed that the total peach production in the U.S. declined by 15% from last year. 11. At this point, nearly three-fourths of all U.S. farmers say that this year's drought is severely hurting their harvests. 12. The scorching hot temperatures are leading to water and grass shortages, which has added to the higher costs of feed, hay, and farming equipment, are forcing farmers and ranchers to make some difficult choices. In several states, thousands of cattle are dropping dead from starvation. In many cases, ranchers are selling off their herds and sending animals to slaughterhouses earlier than usual. In Oregon, this has resulted in a 41% drop in the total number of cattle in the state. 13. Meanwhile, in New Mexico, the number of cattle is down 43% due to the endless drought. 14. In Texas, the situation is even more extreme. Half of the state's cattle have disappeared from its food supply chain. 
15. As more and more animals are sent to meat processing plants much earlier than usual, we are going to have a short-term increase in supply. On the other hand, we're set to face a massive shortage of meat in the long run, and prices will continue to climb higher and higher. In fact, one beef producer in Oklahoma is warning that ground beef prices could eventually top $50 per pound. 16. The U.S. drought monitor shows that around 40% of the country has been suffering from severe drought or worse for 101 consecutive weeks. 17. Meteorologists say that this is the worst multi-year mega drought the United States has seen in 1,200 years, and we still don't know when conditions are gonna change. 18. On the flip side, the drought is causing brutal rain events that are resulting in floodings and exacerbating crop losses. In the space of five weeks, U.S. cities have experienced five instances of 1,000-year rain events, which has caused episodes of severe flooding that have just a 0.1% probability of happening in any given year. Soil actually absorbs water better when damp, while heavy rains slosh off parched landscapes into waterways, experts say. 19. On the other side of the ocean, Europe is also facing the worst drought it has seen in almost 500 years. In some parts of Central Europe, river levels have fallen so low that hunger stones are being revealed for the first time in centuries. In the Elbe River, which runs from the mountains of Czechia through Germany to the North Sea, stones that date back to a drought in 1616, which read, If you see me, then weep. Another one reads, when this goes under, life will become more colorful again. 20. It's been projected that corn production for the entire European Union is set to decline by as much as one-fifth in 2022. The plunge in corn output could result in further food inflation. It'll boost feed costs for livestock herds, adding to even more woes for farmers who are plagued with elevated diesel and fertilizer prices, authorities warned. 21. In France, farmers are alerting that crop losses can affect up to 35% of this year's harvest. Recently, two large wildfires that broke out due to the heat in the southwestern Gironde department destroyed more than 20,000 hectares, or 49,400 acres, of crops. 22. Crop losses in some areas of the United Kingdom could be as high as 50%, the National Drought Group estimates. In its latest report, the group noted that irrigation options are diminishing, with reservoirs being emptied fast, and losses of 10 to 50% are expected for crops, including carrots, onions, sugar beet, apples, and hops. Milk production is also down nationally because of a lack of food for cows, and wildfires are putting large areas of farmland at risk. 23. Germany is at risk of experiencing massive crop losses as well. According to a report by Bild Zeitung, a serious lack of rainfall has led farmers to fear that the likes of maize, sugar beet, potato, and soybean crops could see losses of up to 50% should rain not return soon. If there is no heavy rainfall in the near future, we can expect considerable harvest losses of up to 50% for almost all crops. State Farmer President Joachim Ruckwied said on Thursday, emphasizing that crops harvested in the fall were likely to be the worst affected. 24. Italy's National Farming Association has exposed that the damage caused by extreme weather is estimated to exceed 6 billion euros, or $6.2 billion, equal to 10% of Italy's annual agricultural production. So far this year, some farmers in the country already have lost up to 80% of their harvest. 25. In Somalia, authorities are projecting that vegetable and grain production will drop by about 80% this year due to the ravaging drought that's been plaguing large swathes of the nation. 
26. According to a recent report by the U.S. Agency for International Development's USAID Famine Early Warning Systems Network, this nightmarish drought that's been hitting several parts of the planet has already resulted in the deaths of at least 7 million animals in eastern Africa. The carcasses of giraffes, goats, camels, and droves of cattle were found in villages after starving to death in northern Kenya. Such losses can be ruinous for families who face food insecurity as a result, the Washington Post noted. 27. Simultaneously, conditions have been so dire in China that the Yangtze River is 45% below normal levels, and that is extremely alarming considering that it's impacting many sectors of the country's industry. Right now, the eastern superpower is going through the worst drought ever recorded. 28. India typically accounts for 40% of the global rice trade, but authorities are saying that production in the country will be way down in 2022 due to considerable rainfall deficits in key rice-producing states. The total area of rice paddy planting in India already has declined by 3 million hectares in August. 29. Right now, a third of Pakistan is underwater after a recent flood absolutely devastated the nation, and agricultural areas have been hit particularly hard. Consequently, the vast majority of crops in the country have been destroyed. It has been estimated that roughly 65% of the country's food basket, particularly crops like rice, cotton, wheat, onions, have been washed away, local reports say. Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zadari, in an interview earlier this week, offered an even starker outlook by saying that about 80 to 90 percent of the country's crops have been damaged by the floods. It's all one big ocean. There's no dry land to pump the water out, added Sherry Raymond, calling it a crisis of unimaginable proportions. 30. Since 2021, fertilizers have tripled in price. In some nations, including the United States, farmers have seen fertilizer prices going four to six times higher than they were last year. 31. With grocery prices going through the roof, Americans are taking short-term loans to be able to afford everyday necessities. According to the Daily Mail, one of the major players in the buy now, pay later game, Zip, reported a 95% rise in the purchase of groceries using their service in the U.S., with restaurant bills up 64%. In contrast, Credit Karma data found that a third of BNPL users reported that they had fallen behind on at least one payment, with 72% of them adding that it had had an impact on their credit score. 32. On a similar note, food banks all across the United States are reporting a massive surge in demand. In fact, according to North Texas Food Bank CEO Trisha Cunningham, demand for her food bank is worse than a couple of years ago. We are serving now at higher levels than we even did at the peak of the pandemic. The overwhelming answer to why people are lining up at the food bank is that they can't afford groceries. One person outlined during an interview with CBS that it's just the basics, flour, sugar, eggs, milk. Those prices have spiraled out of control, adding, we don't buy cookies and cakes because we don't have that luxury anymore. Estimates suggest that a whopping 13 million new Americans can't afford essential items at supermarkets. 33. The World Health Organization is telling us that millions of people in Africa are now facing a very real threat of starving to death. A study released in July noted that over 50 million people in East Africa will face acute food insecurity this year. Roughly 7 million children are already suffering from malnourishment, and hundreds of thousands are leaving their homes in search of food or livelihoods. 34. Advocates with the World Food Program have stressed that while demand levels are sky-high, resources have hit rock bottom. 
As many as 828 million people go to bed hungry every night, and the number of those facing acute food insecurity has soared from 135 million to 345 million people since 2019. A total of 50 million people in 45 countries are teetering on the edge of famine, they wrote. Needless to say, that number will soon be much higher. 35. Earlier this year, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres publicly stated that he believes that it's likely that there will be multiple famines in 2023. Similarly, UN General Assembly President Abdullah Shahid noted that the organization's ability to respond to these issues has been compromised. Frankly, we were already falling short of meeting our food security targets prior to 2020. However, the situation is now critical, he said. The shocks of multiple global crises have weakened our institutions, our economies, and challenged our ability to effectively respond. Unfortunately, as global food supplies continue to shrink, the risk of civil unrest keeps on rising. In many places, this is already happening. A new analysis released by Verisk Maplecroft, a UK-based risk consulting and intelligence firm, highlighted that the risk of civil unrest has surged this year in more than half of the world's countries, signaling a coming period of heightened global instability fueled by inflation, geopolitical conflicts, and shortages of essentials. Researchers noted that 101 of the 198 countries tracked on its civil unrest index saw an increase in their risk of civil unrest between the second and the third quarters of this year. In recent weeks, we have seen major demonstrations erupting in cities all over the world, but conditions are not as extreme as they're gonna get in the coming months. It's safe to say that when it finally becomes undeniably clear that there simply will not be enough food for everyone in 2023, we're gonna see a lot more chaos emerging all across the planet. Many populations will deeply suffer as we enter the later stages of 2022. In 2023, there will be famines and social uprisings all over the globe. This is not a drill. A critical global food crisis has already begun, and we would like to encourage you to get prepared for what is ahead while you still can. Thank you for watching. If you find our content informative, we strongly recommend Seven Year Apocalypse, the latest book by the economist and financial expert, Michael Snyder. In the meantime, please hit the bell get our notifications, and please share this message with friends and family.